This is a tree in liquid form. What? Yes, the thing you're looking at is not a TV screen or a fish tank. It is a living, breathing, liquid tree. Living, breathing. Yes, a tree that you can pour into a cup just like a drink. And we found the guy who invented it. Hello, nice daily. I am Dr. Ivan. Dr. Ivan is a scientist from Serbia. And one day he saw a big problem. People in big cities want more trees to clean the air. But there's no space for trees because there are too many buildings, too many statues, and too many sidewalks. So Dr. Ivan came up with a genius idea. He decided to put a tree inside a bench. Yes, it cleans like a tree, it's green like a tree, but there are no roots and no leaves. This is liquid tree. liquid tree. Here is how it works. Inside this tank, there is a special mix of water and a secret ingredient called microalgae. Microalgae are basically a type of organism that lives so water, sun and CO2. Microalgae are super tiny. And when they breathe inside this tank, pollution goes in and fresh air goes out. You can put liquid tree anywhere on any surface inside or outside. Yes, microalgae clean the air just like a tree. And the more it cleans, the greener it gets. Liquid tree is solving the problem of pollution in urban areas that cannot accommodate traditional ways of greening such as parks and trees. Just one liquid tree cleans the same amount as a 20-year-old tree. So instead of waiting 20 years to grow a tree, we can plant this in one day. Now the idea is not to replace trees. We like trees. The idea is to replace benches. Yes, benches. See, this bench looks nice, but it only has one purpose, to sit on. But this bench has a tree. It's a seat, it cleans the air, and it can charge your phone. This thing is genius. Today it's in Belgrade, but soon it will be in Paris, New York, and New Delhi. Because even if we can't plant new trees in big cities, we can always find space for a liquid tree. Did she build a flying boat when she failed physics in high school? This is Sampriti. I'm Sampriti and I'm the founder and CEO of Naviabo. An entrepreneur living in San Francisco, but she did not always live here. She was born and raised 8,000 miles away in Kolkata, India. And no, she was not a top student at high school. I actually failed physics in high school. No, she did not go to a top college. Actually, I went to a community college, a small college in Calcutta. I did not go into any of the top schools. And no, she did not have access to the internet as a kid. I only got internet at home at age 20. Her teacher even said to her that she should focus on becoming a housewife. I was not the best in math in high school, and he thought that the best I could be was probably a housewife or, you know, work on a much smaller job. So how did she end up here in San Francisco with a flying boat? You know, as Steve Jobs said, that the world is built by people no more smarter than you and I. So why not go for something audacious, something you're passionate about, and just build it? This is where it gets interesting. At age 20, Sampriti decided to take control of her life. So she logged on the internet and searched for anything that had the word internship. 
She sent 540 cold emails asking anybody for an internship. 539 said no, and only one said yes. Well, in each of the 540 emails, I actually told them that what I can do for them, and only four re responded, and then ultimately only one worked out, and that was an internship at Fermilab. And that's all she needed, her first opportunity. She flew to Chicago to work at a lab as a research assistant and there, she fell in love with science. She spent all her time researching physics and engineering. And then she got another internship at NASA. And then she got a master's at Ohio State and a PhD at MIT. All in less than 13 years of hard work. Well, in the last 13 years, I learned so much, and that gave me the confidence to tackle any kind of hard problems, whether it is designing nuclear reactors, or, you know, building flight controls, or building this flying boat. You can do that. Yes. Yes! A flying boat! She knew exactly how to build it! She moved to San Francisco, raised $12 million, hired a smart team, and designed an electric flying boat. It works just like an airplane, but the three wings are under the water. When the boat gets fast enough, the wings lift the boat above the waves. This is the wing. It lifts the whole thing up. And because this is electric, there's no noise. We're like above the water right here. See, you can see the thing goes down very, very deep. So cool. <laughs> this way, you can go super fast, super smooth, right on top of the ocean. Okay, check this out. These are waves from another boat. These are waves from another boat. And, and we don't feel them. We don't feel them because we're above the waves. This boat is also fully electric, which means there are no carbon emissions and no engine noise. This is like Tesla for the seas. That's why this is 10 times more efficient than normal boats. It takes less energy. You're actually 10 times more efficient than a traditional gas boat. And suddenly you open up a whole new opportunity of transportation on the water that was never ever possible before. And she's not stopping here. She thinks that one day we can have self-driving boats that go as fast as a taxi. So we can use the water as a highway. And we can do all of this, open up a whole new economy without hurting the oceans. I am so inspired by her story. A girl in India who failed physics didn't go to a good college, didn't even get internet until age 20, is now here. Changing the world, inventing flying electric boats in San Francisco with the help of her incredible team. I think everybody has fears and insecurities, but when you have a sense of purpose and a mission, and if that's big enough, then you do it. Even if that feels a little bit scary, you know you have one life to go for it, and so you go for it. No matter who you are and where you live, you can change your life and you can change the world. What if Fermilabs never responded to your email? I would have sent another 500 email till I get a response. <laughs>
how polluted the air was, he realized that no one knew. No one knew how polluted the air is. Because the sensors to test air quality cost $30,000. And no one in my city had one. This was not just a problem in his city, it was a problem everywhere. Only seven countries in the whole of Africa had collected data about air quality. If you don't know how bad the air is, how can you fix it? This is partly because of the huge cost of uh, setting up air quality monitoring stations. So engineer worked and worked until he made a device that could test the air for just $150, from $30,000 to $150. Now that is affordable. And here is the genius part. He made hundreds of these sensors and put them on motorbikes. Because an air sensor on a building can only test one place at one time. But if you put one sensor on a motorbike, you can test 100 places in one day. Now, there are over 150 air sensors all around Uganda on motorbikes, on top of buildings, on top of traffic lights, everywhere. Before, no one knew how polluted the air was, but now everyone knows and they want to fix it. His invention is making people clean the air. The government of Uganda has created a new road to protect the air and they've used our data about uh, air pollution to make it happen. Because of this incredible idea, Google.org awarded engineer and his team over $3 million in grant money that helped make all of this happen. The early support was huge. It allowed us to help many people and expand many more places. Not just in Kampala, but all over Africa in eight different cities. We need more people like him, like the motorbike riders, like Google.org and the entire community to come together and fix the air we breathe.